Hi everyone, good morning from Cape Town. It's such a beautiful day here, as you can see. So, so beautiful. I'm not gonna wait for people to come on because I know it's, it's dark in, in the world where most of you will be listening from. So um, I'm just gonna seize the moment and I'll take questions thereafter uh, that we can address on a future live when more of you can be on. So um, I'm not even gonna give it a moment to think that um, you guys will be coming on at this, at this hour. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted to see, I had to seize the moment. Um, here we are in this unusual moment in time um, and it's, it's an opportunity, it's a huge opportunity. Um, I know a lot of you are feeling very, very stressed. Some of you are feeling very fearful um, and there's this sense of what's next, what's actually happening who's in charge, um, you know, is good going to win, is God going to win, is light going to win. And ultimately that really comes down to us because, you know, there was never going to be a savior anyway. There was just going to be examples, way showers, those who would help fix things as we go. But, um, you know, the draining of the swamp, we must remember as above, so below. So we can't have this, this swamp draining happen externally in the world out there that we know is so corrupt and so saturated with evil and then not, and then still be colluding in patterns and habits that enable corruption to grow in us. It just will never work that way. So, you know, from, from my vantage point, I've been watching this process and, and researching for years and years and years, you know, not just since the COVID crisis, but for years, um, understanding what, um, was really going on behind the scenes. And it's easy to understand because if you understand addiction, if you understand acidity in the body, and you know, understand above as above, so below, then of course it follows that as people engage in acidic thoughts, activities, and consumption of substances, uh, they will be, become addicted to those things and their biological, energetic, spiritual, sexual, mental, emotional terrains will reflect that. And so they'll get greedy, they'll get lustful, they'll get, um, they'll, they'll come apart, literally disintegrate. They'll go from states of order to states of chaos. And that's, um, you know, that's if you wanna think about the whole concept of evil, it's reversing life. So it's taking something that is highly ordered, has a huge amount of intellectual quotient in it and taking that away, taking it apart. You know, if you want to think about disintegration in a really simple, basic context, think about a, a T-shirt you buy, and it's you know it's and it, it's nice and, and tightly woven, and you wear it and you wear it and you wear it and you wear it, and eventually it comes apart. So that's disinte disintegration, and that comes from a lack of integrity. So, first of all, if we're going to talk about um, corruption, we have to understand what its opposite is, which is incorruptibility, and we have to understand that incorruptibility is bringing levels of chaos to higher levels of order. So we're reinstating the integration, we're re restoring, it's restoration. Um, and with that, we have a chance at sovereignty. The greater our integrity, the greater our, our um, incorruptibility, the greater our, um, our opportunity for sovereignty. So, you know, our sovereignty cannot be gained by someone else. And frankly, you know, and I, I would like to say I speak for a great number of, um, of those who have been able to see, let's say, what's really going on, um, that we were never following one like, particular light, one particular leader. It's just that we know how much needs to be done and there's so much that we know we don't know going on behind the scenes that needs to be done whilst we are still doing the work on ourselves, not to relegate it, to delegate it to somebody else and sit back and watch. There's an element of watching because there's so much we don't know, but we need to be watching while we're doing the work. And that's what this is all about. That's what, that's what this conversation is all about. So for those of you who are passionate about seeing the corruption uh, be um, annihilated and who, you know, are, uh, let's say, patriotic about something that really, um, that, that lives up to the true meaning of liberty and freedom and, um, and, and, 
um, and our inalienable, inalienable rights. For those of you, I speak to those of you now who understand what's happening on the planet and how to support that process, no matter what's happening that we are aware of or unaware of in the outside world, we need to support that process from within. And that's, that's what this work is all about. So it's about draining our personal swamp so we become a boon and a support to the bigger picture and what's actually happening out there. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a big responsibility. It's a big effort to take on to do that. But what, you know, what's the alternative to sit back and keep doing what we're doing? Um, no, because that means that corruption is still going to be in us. So it doesn't matter how much good is done temporarily in the world. It's just a band-aid. It would just be a band-aid moment. And there might be some, some, some cheering because, you know, we, we've been programmed to like to see our, um, you know, our side win, and there's um, a, a euphoria in that, but, but that's also a form of addiction. So we can, we can be conscious of that and enjoy that while we're also doing the hard work and then putting forth the effort um, that, that we need. And, and I'm so happy to see everyone jumping on. Um, uh, forgive me if I don't address everyone individually. I just don't want to get distracted. I really want to lay all this down, uh, but I'm delighted you're here. And I, um, I really hope everyone's doing so well and is feeling very optimistic because like I said, this is a very exciting time, a great opportunity, nothing but opportunity here. This is, this is the moment where the, the mirror reflects back on us and says, you know what? It's time for us to stand up and do our part. And, 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 and if we have a blueprint, which is what I wanna offer you here um, in terms of the expertise that I possess, not you know expertise across the board, but specifically what I can offer because each one of us uh, has a purpose in this, and each one of us is you know on on the team. We have we we are we're a group. It's not like we're on our own to do this. I would feel so overwhelmed and overburdened with responsibility if I felt like I had to do this alone, but I don't. And um, and I I loved hearing a few of, uh, other people saying that recently as well. Like we can work really hard, and then we can step back and breathe because we know that those who are on the team and prepared and, and, and ready for this time have been preparing their whole lives for this moment are gonna step in and, uh, and be there. And then we rest and then we come back online, so to speak. Um, all right, so, so in order to understand corruption, we have to understand, I'm gonna re re restate a few things. Um, corruption creates disintegration. So the opposite of corruption is integrity, is incorruptibility. When we engage in things, that cause disintegration. We're engaging in something that's causing corruption, which is rot. We have to understand that corruption means rot. Um, it's the disintegration, the disillusion, the, um, the, 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 the moving into the death cycle of something, where something could be in a perpetually regenerative cycle, or even, um, even a leveling up, which uh, the term for leveling up is syntropy. Um, there's the leveling down, the falling into chaos from order, which is entropy. Some people like to use the term neg entropy um, to describe the opposite of entropy. I personally prefer syntropy because um, it's not a neg. <laughs> That's really the only reason. But you can use either one, and I sometimes use both as well. Um, so let's, let's all just take a moment to feel into our being and identify where we have this play of swamp that needs to be drained within us. Um, it's, it's on every level. It's physical, it's emotional, it's spiritual, it's energetic, it's um, mental, it's sexual. They all play a role and we can't be, um, we can't just address one or some and not the others. We have to take this as a whole. And that's one of the things that hasn't been done in our society, our culture, you know, we have, we usually, you know, we go to someone for our health, we go to someone for our mental health, someone for our physical health, someone for, you know, Tantra for sexual stuff. It's all taken apart, you know, it's, it's, that's, everything is broken down, but remember broken down is disintegration. So we bring it back into a state of integration and we see that what applies for one applies for all and we can't fix one of them without fixing all of them. And we only fix all of them when we pay attention to each one of them as well. So we get into the nitty gritty of each one, but we realize that the same laws apply to all of them. So this is why um, when I share these things, I would like you to really take it in the context of, oh wait, if this is true for my body, this is probably also true for my emotional state. So if I need 
physical hygiene, I also need emotional hygiene. Well, what is emotional hygiene? What is mental hygiene? What is sexual hygiene? What is spiritual hygiene? What is, what is energetic hygiene? What, what do all these things mean? They are so important because otherwise we're walking around filthy. We have, a, a, the, we're, we're, we're swamp creatures. We don't want to be swamp creatures. We're not made to be that. We're not designed to be that. But what happens is the world we live in, which is not the natural, which is not this, this is not the world that we're born into. We're born into a world that has more to do with, if you see the structure around the house, we're, 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 we come in, into a world that wants to domesticate us. Domestication means control. Domestication is created in order to create control. So it's dominion, it's, um, it's domination. All of these words come back to holding you down to exploit. So we have a great exposition, actually. You don't see much of the house here, but you have the idea of one thing is straight lines. You never see straight lines in nature, okay? You have straight lines, they're fixed, they're holding up a structure, um, and there is a place for that, and there's a place for that in our transition. I do believe that we're gonna have very different, if, if, we, can, if we can bridge this transition to our uh, an, an actual expression of our divinity and how we're actually supposed to be living and moving and breathing and, and existing and, and, and thinking and flourishing and engaging, that it will look very, very different. So there are some things that will be in place for the transition or for the duration of the transition that will eventually evolve. But for now, um, you know, we, we have to honor those things and see that they are, just be really conscious and aware of the fact that there is this, this juxtaposition. So we're brought into this world. So it's being really windy up here. It's start blowing. But I don't want to go inside because it's just too beautiful out here. Um, I'd like you to enjoy the view. And frankly, I'm enjoying it myself and just um, feeling the fresh air. Um, all right. So despite the fact that my hair flies everywhere and I've got <laughs> just let it all go. Um, all right. So so this, this, this confinement, this saying, this is how you will live. That's what happens to us when we come in. It's like, this is how you will live. This is what you will think. This is what a word is. This is how you write these letters. You need to sit your bottom in a desk at school for 12 years and we're going to drill this into you and you're going to lose your childhood and you're going to eat these foods they're going to corrupt and contaminate your body and make you weak and you know and you're going to read these magazines and read these books and watch these shows so we can fill your kingdom i'd like to refer to our sovereignty right we're, we're, we're kingdom we're going to fill that kingdom up this beautiful open spacious divine kingdom we're going to fill it up with all this junk so you have nowhere to move you have nowhere to think you've got none of your own free space this is what you've now been filled up with. And we, um, I've brought this, said this many, many times. Dr. Bruce Lipton has done amazing research around how, our, um, how we are imprinted and programmed so easily between um, zero and or birth and seven years old because we are, um, we are in a stage of our lives when we're um, open to programming. Of course, the idea was <laughs> that in the divine process, we would have that wonderful receptivity to learn so many good things um, very, very quickly. Be, you know, become geniuses by the time we're 12, uh, by the time we're seven, and as opposed to becoming little, you know, recorders of a, a nonsensical world. But the um, the dominators, the dominionators, knew this and know this, and so they capitalize on that time period to really um, implant and program what what serves them, so that they, we can be exploited. Um, you know, human energy is being harvested and we have to understand how that works and what it means. Um, but why? Because it's so amazingly powerful. Because if we weren't controlled, if we weren't dominated, if our, if our kingdoms weren't filled with a bunch of rubbish, um, then what? Well, when we couldn't be dominated, we would, we would grow into our power very quickly. And one of the problems actually, not to shove too many things in at once, is, is that we're given so much false history. So there's, you know, we look back and we're, we're told to we'll look back and see how far we've come or look and see how natives used to live it. But it's, there's so much false history in that, that we have to really, there's, we can look at what we think is the closest thing to true history, but we always have to temper that with the understanding that, you know, victor, um, history is written by the victors and the victors have an agenda and there's a reason that they were the victors and, you know, and, and temper that with what we know about life and how life works. So for example, um, one of the big things that we have to do when we take it upon ourselves to drain our own swamp in the cleansing of our bodies and the, and the, uh, and the preventing of further disintegration is we need to look at the killing and, and eating of animals. Um, and people will say, well, it's been done throughout human history. Well, maybe it has. And maybe that maybe there, there are groups that have done that, maybe there are groups that haven't. 
and maybe when we think about these, you know, if, if, you know, if we're to also consider the history, the biblical history of people living for hundreds of years, um, then we have to consider that maybe they were doing things differently. What were they doing? Because what we do know, absolutely, in the present tense, is that animal flesh is rotting in the body. So if it's rotting in the body, it's not contributing to your well-being, to your longevity, to your vibration, to your high vibration, to your, um, to your regeneration. It's contributing to your disintegration. So, um, you know, that's one thing. And we can, we can look at the Native Americans and Indians and say, well, um, you know, they, they, they killed animals, but they, you know, um, prayed for the soul and they, of the animal and they utilized all of it and they didn't waste and they were, you know, they, they kept it sacred. Well, that, that may be true, but that might not be the ultimate. Maybe they weren't the ultimate. You know, and, and so if we're working toward incorruptibility, because we know that if there is corruption, there's going to be an inclination to greater corruption, which is going to grow and grow and grow, we have to cut to where can we make sure we cut out the, um, the proclivity toward corruption, the, um, the potential increase of corruption. Okay, let me let this pass. Hopefully the phone doesn't blow away. <laughs> um, it's coming in gust and then it's passing. So I think, I think we'll just kind of roll with it. Um, okay, let's see here. All right. So, um, so that's one thing we really need to look at is this, um, the situation of consuming animals because, um, one, we're domesticating them, we're domesticating them for the purpose of our own consumption and the, um, with the, um, advent of the agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago, where we started to domesticate our land, our plants, our animals, we then saw the, 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 the this move into civilization, which required all of this intervention, um, physical intervention, like, you know, what would become, you know, we'd come to that as doctors and things because the body started breaking down. The second you try to exploit something, you're going to wind up exploiting yourself. So where we have corruption, we have acidity, acidic actions, acidic thoughts, acidic substances. Those acidic substances start to break down the body. They're also addictive. Anything that's acidic is addictive. The degree to which it's acidic is the degree to which it's going to be addictive. See, so if this is this is why I'd like you to start thinking about acidity and alkalinity in an alkaline diet, an alkaline lifestyle, alkaline thoughts, alkaline feelings in a completely different way. It's it's really about preventing addiction. It's about um, enabling yourself to be free of addiction. Because remember, where there's addiction, there's an, ens there's enslavement. Addiction is chains. You know, you're, you're not benefiting yourself when you're engaging in acidic activities and, and feeding your addictions. You're breaking yourself down. It's something else within you. It's the entities that live on that acidic substance that want more and more of it, and they drive you to have more of it. So you want to, have, you want to be able to conquer them so that they are annihilated, they're driven away, and, um, and, and they can no longer capitalize on on your energy and harvesting your energy from within that's why i have a real problem with people who say oh you should you know like give in to what you want i'm going to tell you no don't do that look at it think about why you want it think about what's driving it think about where it's come from think about what is actually desiring it um, and then ask yourself is that you the true you the you at the helm the you that is your your spirit with a big s that's, that, that wants nothing more than to evolve and be connected with the all that is, or is that is that you know something that is trying to um, that is has gotten in and is working against that desire, against that um, that ability to grow your integrity? It's typically the latter. It's always the latter. Of course, it's the latter. It doesn't mean that we have to get rid of every single addiction right here and now. This is about transition. We need to start along the path. This is about embarking on a new way, so that we can get there. It's not about getting there tomorrow. You know, think about what's easy to get rid of. I mean, things that are obvious, you know, let me just like throw out the things I would like to say, you know, let's have some expectations here. I want to, um, to, to be sympathetic and understanding of where you may be. And I also want to push you a little bit. I want to give you that sense of, you know, um, we can't do this. We can't, we can't succeed in draining our personal swamps if we don't make a really big effort to do a few things that are hard. So I'm going to hold you to that. And I'm going to say, you know, I'd like you to think about, you know, if you're, if you're ha having animal foods every day, then maybe have an animal flesh substance every other day. That's a dramatic difference. And that's moving in the right direction, but it's not taking it away from you entirely. It's not completely, you know, uh, it's, it's not making, it's not an impossible concept. 
because next week, you know what, you're going to be able to do a lot more easily. And these ideas that might seem kind of foreign are going to start to settle in because you're going to have a few really good night's sleeps where you process these concepts and you, you integrate it. So don't worry if things don't land well right now, or if it seems really hard right now, let ha, trust the higher intelligence of your spirit to know that, um, it's, it's all going to work out because you're not meant to be consuming animal foods. You're not meant to be acidifying yourself. You're not meant to be stressed out and filled with anxiety and exhausted by life. It's not how we're meant to live. That's the matrix. That's, that's what life has, has um, done by way of controlling you and programming you. We're breaking out of that. We're freeing ourselves of that. And the more that you do that, the more you'll be able to do that because the more you gain that integrity, the more, the less you start, you keep breaking down your integrity, the more you start to, um, to restore yourself, the more power you will have. And that power will enable you to do things you're not even, you know, conscious of now or not even thinking of now, not even on your radar now, but they will be, and you will be doing these things later because you'll have more power. Power is Intel intelligence, intelligence from the creator. So all comes flowing back. Um, so again, we need to get back to, um, incorruptibility is a factor of restoring integrity and preventing acidity, which means you're overcoming, stopping acidity, which means you're overcoming addiction. And addiction is enslavement. Enslavement is the opposite of sovereignty. We're never going to be able to be a sovereign nation or a sovereign earth, sovereign people, a sovereign humanity, if we are enslaving ourselves by voting for sugar and animal products and cow's milk and um, packaged foods and fast foods and twisting and all of these little things that, you know, most people, they cannot sit still without something in their hands or consuming something. Those are the things I want you to look at. And I don't want you to look at them from the same perspective of, Oh, I've got to quit smoking finally. Or, you know, I know I drink too much or, oh, you know, I'm just a, a closet eater or I, um, or I, you know, I, I have to lose weight or don't think in those terms. That's, that's how the matrix keeps you trapped. It's, it keeps you on that, um, on that conveyor belt of always wanting to overcome something, but, but because your conditions, the conditions in your life don't change, it makes it very hard to actually overcome those things. And usually you overcome one, but then take on another one. And that's often what happens, of course, in, um, you know, addiction recovery is you stop drinking, but you start smoking, you know, or something like that. So, so we need to see that the, if the hygiene can be addressed on all levels, it's going to empower every level. It's going to make it so much easier. For example, um, one of the great boons of cleansing of, you know, and when I say cleansing, it's draining the swamp. It's the same thing, right? It's, it's removing the, the accumulation that is obstructing your flow in your body that is sitting there rotting. It's putri uh, putrefying. It's fermenting. It's causing your disintegration. It's causing your rot. It is the corruption. It's the corruption within. So, um, where was that? <laughs> so, so we need to obviously, um, you know, address all those things. I think I've lost my train of thought slightly. I beg your pardon, but, um, but we bring our, oh yes, I know what I'm going to say. So, um, so when, when we do this cleansing work, when we drain the swamp, what happens is amazing. A few things. First of all, you have a natural sense of ease. It's the hallmark of a successful cleanse. And remember when we drain the swamp, it means we get the stuff out. It doesn't mean that we, you know, think we're draining the swamp because we think we're doing things. You, when, when you, you do, you do this work, you're going to be expunging. Okay. I need everybody to go get an enema kit. This is, this is so critical. We have to wash ourselves. Stop, you know, go ahead and have a, have a bath and shower every day, twice a day, three times a day, however often you want to. And that's important. But the, what you're washing off when you're showering and bathing for the most part, 80% plus it's the rubbish from within you that's expunging all day long through your skin. That's why it stinks. It's not the stuff you're picking up as you're running around every day um, or during the day. But we have to wash from within. There's so much corrupted, noxious, rotting garbage inside our bodies. I mean, I won't say mine now because I've been cleansing for 20 years, um, but I had 25 years of putting noxious, gross, rotting stuff in. So, you know, it, it, what I can speak of now is just pure um, experience, pure life experience, professional and personal experience in what, what happens when, when you re release this stuff. And the great thing too is that it happens with, by degree to which you do it. So 
don't think that it's going to take you 20 years. It don't even, you know, every bit that you expunge, if you think about the, the big swamp, the big uh, corrupt, disgusting, evil um, factions that we've you know, become aware of, get, you know, every time, you know, there's an announcement that, um, you know, there's been another capture of these pedophiles or, um, you know, these, these horrendous evil people up to their nefarious deeds, it's like, thank God, okay, it's on the case. This is, this is working, good is winning. Um, God is winning, the light is winning. So in the same, to the same degree, every time you have a successful elimination and your body expunges the waste, it's like, yes, okay, we've got more of these guys out. There's, you know, there's less of them taking advantage of the you know, benevolent forces in the body and the innocent forces in the body that, that deserve to live and thrive and move and, 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 and pulse. See, so just every time you have a success of expunging these and you are draining your swamp, it's, it's every day there's, there's a, um, an, an, an increase in cleanliness, a decrease in the filth and noxiousness and, um, and you, you know, you're really getting somewhere. You can do this really quickly. Um, you know, you'll, you'll still, even after years, you know, but let's think in terms of days and weeks and months right now, you'll, it'll still be getting better and better and better. So it never ends, never stops. It's like, you know, even if we were to take, you know, best case scenario, we, you know, the swamp gets drained, the one we're talking about gets drained, then, okay, so now we have a, a beautiful body of water. Let's say you can continue with that metaphor. Um, and it's rich with life, but then that life gets to evolve. That if, if we care for it properly, there is the, the, the intelligence multiplies, it compounds. So too will the intelligence in your own body multiply and compound when you remove this waste. And that's what makes it so exciting. It's a never ending expansion. We don't, we don't plateau, we'll never plateau. We will only plateau if we, if we stop putting forth the effort and we let these corrupted forces sink, uh, slip back in and take over. But the, the more power we have, the less inclined we'll be to do that because we'll have a greater sense of ourselves. We'll be, the, the stronger, you, the cleaner you are, let's say that the, the more your swamp is drained, I'm talking about on all levels, the, the more satisfied you are just existing, just breathing, just like being. You don't think, oh, I've got to, I, I need to go somewhere to stimulate my, self and be, be entertained or I need another person. To, yes, of course we need each other, but in a, in a completely different way than the way the world is operating now on all these um, very dysfunctional relationships. We won't be doing that. We won't be looking for external satisfaction. We'll be conducting beautifully, just like we conduct in the body. We'll be conducting energy. We'll be receiving from creator. We'll be in the network of life. We'll be, we'll be part of it. That, that sense of um, you know, we recognize our individuality and that's beautiful and that's a healthy ego. This is my boundary of consciousness to a point. And then I have elements of my, my consciousness that are flowing throughout and then we become extremely creative. But that beautiful ease that comes when, because the thing is that when you think about the body in terms of, um, and speak, I'm speaking about all levels, but I'm just honing in on the body for a second. Um, it, these, the things that need to be drained, the pathogen, the pathogens, the noxious gases, the, um, just the, the entities that are in and among our, our biological terrain that are not for our highest good, that are, you know, living off of us, that are, um, harvesting our energy, that like the, the acidity and everything. They're not happy. They're not at ease. So they, if they're, if they're abundant in you, then you're not going to be at ease because they're running the show. And they're, they're, they're basically hijacking your personality. They're hijacking your being, your spirit, your, you know, your, your creativity, everything. Because what you're doing is your real estate is filled with them. So you're going to be them, if that makes sense. So the more you release them, the more you go back to the state of divine being that you are, and you'll feel into your true personality. And, um, and that, and you'll feel that wonderful ease. So you'll have a far greater sense of ease, natural ease, not like, oh, let me get calm here. Well, yes, if you go out into the world and you get stressed by everything, then you will need to, to recalibrate. But generally speaking, you won't have dysfunctional emotions. Dysfunctional emotions come from the, the swamp creatures and come from the way we've been programmed and what we've been watching. All the stuff that's gone in our ears, in our eyes, in our nose, through, you know, it's, it's that we consume by mouth, that we consume sexually, 
these things have to be recognized as the whole the whole world that's entered into the intimate space that is you and then it's for you to, to acknowledge them and say you know what that actually that needs to be seen and released because i no longer see it as being a functional part of my being so that's what what starts to happen and then you get you get more power and you get your sovereignty um and and that's really the process so i would just encourage everyone listening now if you know if you're ready to embark on this process of draining your own swamp think about the things that are thoughts actions or substances that you engage with that are acidic and that then in that case are addictive so that you can start to then address them and figure out which of them you can immediately do away with because you don't want to do it all at once it's too much take a category you know whether it's fast foods and processed foods you know whether it's you know you know to get into get into each each person's head I, I i want you to do that you need to do that work because it's 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 um it's so vast and the things it's so individual but what are those things is it addiction to um to devices to entertainment that's um toxic because it's vulgar or violent or um you know in in some way um you know gratuitously um hyper stimulative that's just um like you get my meaning, my meaning um or is it dramas personal dramas is it relationships are you addicted to people are you addicted to sex are you addicted to shopping are you addicted to like what what are those things out there and what are the ones you can really address right now and say you know what in this in this big pool of my life of addiction i really don't need to do x y and z just take that on first get rid of the ones you can get rid of and then look at the ones that you can decrease so that's like stage that's it's still in it's still today i want you to still do that today when you wake up uh, when you hear this but um but figure out how you can decrease that how you can make friends with the fact that you have this this inclination this addiction that's a, it's a little too hard for you to give up right now but that you're going to watch it and 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 um and lessen it and then you must make the connection that there's no way that the greater swamp can be drained unless you were drained and your swamp is drained i should say um which is ironic because we get so drained because of the way we live in the matrix which is coming from um the um the directives of the matrix which is in you know insidious with swamp creatures that are driving it so it's um it's a different kind of drained that we need to to think about now um okay i haven't asked to take questions yet and i really don't want to overlook any that may be come through so let me just go back and if anyone does have questions at this stage i'm very happy to address them um then then uh the next thing would be to consider how you may be party to exploitation where are you taking more than you need where are you controlling other living things um and you know i i i like to say ruthlessly root it out don't don't be afraid to look at what you've been party to we all have you know been party to things that have not been helpful because we were taught the wrong things but now that we know now that we're really looking at these things we have to you know the onus and it's incumbent it comes incumbent upon us to actually change them we can't keep saying oh you know we want things to change and still be you know dominating exploiting uh, objectifying and mistreating anything we cannot do that we have to be very very tough on ourselves about that and and it's you know it's hard because our lives are so busy and that's part of the problem that's part of the addiction by the way part of it is going to have to be looking at your life and seeing where am i spreading myself thinly where am i letting where where is anxiety and stress operating on me because i'm in this cycle that just perpetuating it and you know for many of us for most people at some point in their lives really difficult challenges come about and make it make it hard to even you know get through the day so i feel for for anyone in that situation um but i can guarantee you that as you clear and cleanse this stuff out those things won't be so dreadful because you'll gain your power you'll you'll be you'll be in a much stronger position to deal with it your thoughts because they're cleaner you won't 
you won't be allowing your, your mind field to share space with the same patterns of thinking that, um, that you, know, you would have had when those things came about. So you will be able to deal with things a lot better. I promise I speak from personal experience. Um, it, it, I, I don't know how I would have gotten through the things that have happened to me in the last 20 years were it not for the fact that I had this going for me, that I knew how to keep my physicality clean, clear, open, and flowing so I could have a natural state of ease. Despite that, I mean, I personally am a, sort of my, um, my disposition is to be a little bit um, high strung, let's say. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, it's, I think it's just because of a lot of trauma and abuse when I was very young. And eventually, and you know, little by little, I think, you know, having um, loving people in one's life and knowing how to choose loving people as opposed to people who would, um, you know, keep those patterns uh, um, alive and active, that, that all comes with, you know, once we get a little space to think and feel and be, be pure with our, 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 all these fields, we make better decisions and we build a better life. But if it weren't for that very simple thing of having um, a, a clean, clear physical being, which of course came about only after I was 25, I'm now 45. So, um, you know, it's, it, it was, it was, it's the biggest gift of my life. And so that's why I wanna share it with you. And I do believe it has a huge part to play in this bigger, um, this bigger undertaking of saving the world, of changing the world, of restoring, restoring life in such a big way. Um, sorry, the wind is really coming through. Um, yeah. So, you know what your homework is. I'm here to help. Um, you know, I have no other mission in life but to, to offer what I know and 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 be of service. Um, you know, the, I think the hardest thing for people who are not familiar with this work to get their head around is the, um, the washing of the intestine, the washing within. And I really hope that anyone who is apprehensive about that, nervous about it, um, will meditate, pray, be still, sleep on it. And, uh, and when you feel ready to go to your local pharmacy and get an enema kit, and when you do, um, you don't want to get the, the, the little uh, tube enemas. That they have chemicals in them. You don't want that. You just want a two-quart enema bag. Uh, my favorite brand is the Cara, C-A-R-A, Cara enema bag. And there's one called the Fountain Syringe. If you want to order it on Amazon, it's very easy to get. They're really cheap, you guys. They're super, super cheap. I mean, I would... I always encourage everyone to go for a professional colon hydrotherapy session and have a, a really full colonic. Um, and, you know, and, and that's, you know, it's something if and when you're ready, but knowing that that waste, that's, that's where we, that's where the, the, the swamp gets drained. Okay. The, the clean eating, the moving away from exploiting, um, the land and the animals and, um, uh, stopping your habits of processed packaged foods and fast food and all that. That is so important, and that stops the re-entry, the continuation of the disintegration. It stops the compounding of it, um, but that's a given. That has to happen, and and this waste needs to leave. It's not just one. A lot of people think that they can clean up their diet and detox. You can't. You have to remove the waste. Um, it's it, The waste perpetuates the desire for the addiction and all this stuff. It's like saying we could just leave the swamp, the big swamp, um, as it is, and just everyone just, you know, be different. And let, let's just be happy while every, while, while all this, you know, all this, these noxious people um, and their nefarious plants are still there and they're still operating. You're, the entities inside your body, these parasites and the fungus and the, um, and the rogue microbes, the noxious gases I keep referring to, <laughs> is um, they're, they're operating on, they're, they're strategizing all the time. They're, they're, they're building colonies. They're colonizing you. They're filling your real estate and colonizing you. Um, so it's impossible to overcome these addictions without them. This is another reason why I have a problem with all these addiction, addiction facilities and places because, again, they, they, don't, they might get you to stop doing one thing, but because your system doesn't get cleared and because your sovereignty isn't restored, because these places are coming out of a matrix mentality, they're, you're not actually going to, to get the true empowerment. We don't just want to stop doing something. We want to stop doing it because we have the say, we have the, 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 the sovereign rule over our being, not because we just stopped doing it. It's a different perspective. 
Um, all right, guys. I think that's, um, unless there's a question. Okay. How to get rid of, um, of my, of my lymph nodes at the neck area. Well, this is the thing. The, the, the lymph is overburdened. Your lymph system is overburdened with waste. So when the waste leaves, all the lymphatic issues start to heal. There might be a time when the lymphatic system becomes very active because with the, um, the awakening and releasing, which is the process of, of detoxification, we awaken the waste and we release waste. And we get into more of that. I mean, I want to give, um, I, this is really for, I mean, not just for beginners in, um, in cleansing the personal swamp and drain and, 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 and everything, but it's it largely, I want to, I want to, um, I want to do this in steps and stages. So there's so much more I'll share, but, um, but essentially as the way the, the awaken and release is the, um, equals cleansing equals draining your personal swamp. So, um, so the release of this waste matter is going to unburden the organs and the systems in the body, the lymph system, especially, and, uh, and, and the blood is going to get cleaner. So the lymph is, it may for a time work harder because it's, it's going to, um, as the waste gets shown the door, it's going to be able to collect more waste too. So when I say gets shown the door, when you have your colonics and your enemas, it releases that and it unburdens the lymph and then the lymph can go get busy about, um, about collecting more. So there's going to be like a, it's like a gathering. It does its work and then you help it with your colonics and enemas by releasing the waste. And then it gets a moment to breathe and can go back to work again because it has renewed energy and it has the ability to get back to it. So that will, that, um, that's a great thing to watch. Watch those lymph nodes, see how they change over time. A few months of cleansing and you should see, I mean, I, I don't want to make promises, um, you know, here like this, but um, let's just say that the logical outcome is for them to be greatly um, um, calmed. There. And remember, when we think about inflammation, that's just that's a that's a trait of these acidic substances. These um, it's a trait of these uh, it's just these entities that come from all this acidic substance. So, um, the thoughts, the activities, the substances, um, they they are not happy. They are inflamed. They because you know to be to be inflammatory or to be inflamed to be you know, to be hot with anger. You guys remember those cartoons growing up? There was the, I mean, the really old cartoons that I used to watch was, you know, the, 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 the man would, something would happen, he'd get really angry and he'd, he'd, he'd see his face and his head and his neck getting red and red and red and red. And then, you know, he just like screams or, you know, whatever it is, or, you know, this idea of fuming, it's all inflammation, inflame, it's fire. So, um, so the lack, uh, the, the, the opposite of inflammation is ease, is peace, is calm. And that's not, a, that's not a peace and calm that's dead. It's a peace and calm that's active, but it's not inflamed. It's not, it's not upset. Um, so it's, um, you know, it, it, this is why when the body needs to, um, to burn things off, it has a fever. It goes into a state of saying, you know, I need to, I need to, to release this. I need to burn this. I need to, I need to, I need to it's a little bit different in the sense it's it's using the heat to kill, but it's like the, the inflammation has gotten to be so much that it actually needs to be put to task to burn this thing off. And functional anger is a desire to break things up, is a desire to stop a pattern that isn't working anymore. So um, there's, but there's dysfunctional anger, which is, it just doesn't actually have any good result in the end. It just uh, causes more problems. But um, anyway, that's on that. Uh, but your lymph nodes should um, dramatically improve. Okay, hi, Cara. How can we drain the swamp in our mental and emotional bodies? I feel like it's impossible for me to drain. Hang on. See more? <laughs> drain the, to drain the physical body without doing the mental and emotional work. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and that's why I'm, I'm talking about the body, but I'm meaning everything. It's really getting windy out here. <laughs> um, okay. So we have to look at what's, what, what is rotting in the emotional, you said the, um, the mental and emotional bodies. Okay. So first of all, our mental field has been filled up with nonsense from the day we were born because we're sharing, we're basically the, the, the law of mentalism is that thought forms combine to make a field, a mind field. And we were born into a minefield that was pre-established, which is the matrix. It's an, an artificial, um, it's a, it's a minefield that, uh, that in, inverted nature 
so that in the inverse of nature is the artificial and so we were captured in that artifice and that artificial way of thinking and everything to do with it became status quo became just culture for us so we have to acknowledge that that which was put into us isn't us is not our authentic truth and in doing that we become free of it bit by bit by bit again it's like we release a percentage every day just by acknowledging and and, and um, acknowledging it and freeing ourselves from it in and of itself so that's that's really really important the same is true with the emotional and the way to think about it and i'll speak about the emotional in a moment a bit more the way to think about it is ask yourself is this functional or is it not functional meaning does this is this useful for me in my life is does this make things better does this does this thought form does this mental this does this um this frame of mind in which i'm dwelling and thinking about you can just pick out a situation you're in or something you're thinking about now something that's been on your mind a decision you want to make something that's been burdening you um or just a, a just a day-to-day -day patterning of the way you think ask yourself is this functional for me is this useful is this making my life better? Is this making the world better? Is it, is it, um, is it, um, is it leading to my greater integration? Is it enabling me to go to higher states of order? Or is it dysfunctional? Is it causing whatever state of order I'm in to disintegrate into lower states of order, into, into states of chaos? Um, and there and then you get your answer and you decide, course that's your free will you decide whether you're going to continue to engage with that line of thinking it is not easy to break patterns and addictions I mean this is the hard work this is the work that's you know people will, will not, not that most self-help books have anything that helpful to say because you no know, if, if someone's not talking about the matrix as far as I'm concerned if, if they haven't acknowledged the um, the this construct that we're all enslaved by I, I mean I think back on all the time I wasted following people and books and ideas that seemed to have a, some light in it. Even, you know, whether it was my Christian upbringing or um, new age things that I was curious about for a while, like all these, it's all disempowering. If it doesn't explain to you that you were born into this construct that was dark and and uh, artificial and, 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 and filled your kingdom, and your mind space and your real estate up with garbage and then ask you to you know participate in life that way completely handicapped it's like that it's that great krishnamurti um saying um to it, there is no measure of health to be well adjusted to um a sincerely uh dysfunctional world i don't think what is it um it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a dysfunctional society or you guys know it it's uh, look it up if you want but it's such a great quote Krishna Murthy um, there's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society I think that's right but I don't 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 quote me on it uh, don't hold me to it something like that and that's the idea it's like you know everything's trying to make you comfortable or make it make it make life better in the operations of the matrix I'm saying the matrix is your cage the matrix is your wheelchair, it's your handicap, it's your broken arms and legs, it's your amputations, it's your inability to, you know, as, as long as you're in that, you're operating with all these handicaps and abilities and limitations. So, you know, unless the, the, um, the fundamental understanding is, this is wrong, and this was never supposed to be, as opposed to, this is life, you know, deal with it, here's a better way to deal with it, no, you know, unless, unless you're, you're, you know, you're getting yourself in, it's like, it's like, you know, saying to a lion in a cage, you know, well, maybe if you meditate, you know, maybe, maybe if you count to 10 before you get angry, no, a lion is not supposed to be in a cage. We are fierce beings. We are not supposed to be in a cage. Even if that cage is not uh, apparent to our eyes, that cage is around us in a mental framework, in a field. And, and, that's, and that's the worst cage because it's a cage you can't see. It'd be so much easier if, you know, if we could just break down some physical um, iron bars and say, oh, okay, now we're free. These are so much harder because these are the ones you don't see. 
So we have to learn to see. So I guess, you know, to answer your question, the, the best way to break down is to learn to see those, uh, th th those cages as if they were physical cages. So when those patterns come up, as those mental patterns come up, and those thoughts come up, see them as iron bars. Don't see them as something that's invisible, doesn't really matter, and you know, they're, they, they are impacting upon you. They are holding you hostage. They're holding you, they're confining you by the nature of them. But if we just address the mind, you know, like so many will do, um, and, and they'll say, oh, well, you know, uh, still the mind, the, um, uh, there's an idea of the, the monkey mind needs to be stilled and it needs to be um, um, harnessed or controlled. But then we, you still haven't explored dysfunctional emotions. You still understand that it's coming from the matrix. Where, how do you get anywhere? You know, you, you're still gonna wind up in the same, um, the, the same sort of assembly line life where there's moments when you feel better, moments you feel worse, but you're still heading for the grave. Probably, you know, if you're lucky, you get a few extra decades than most, or, you know, it, it's, it's unacceptable. And that's, that's really the conversation that we're, we're having. It's like this, we've been, we've been, we've had to collude with this unacceptable world because we didn't understand. And now we're, we're understanding. And we're seeing that it's been hijacking us. It's been harvesting our energy. It's been turning us into slaves and keeping us enslaved and keeping us weak. Everything the matrix does, everything the world does is to keep us weak. I want to make you strong. And I know you can be strong. And it's not, it's not that it's, yes, this work takes work. But once you understand it, and you understand the, the logic of it um, and how it, it's, um, it's just so clear and obvious and it, it checks itself on every, you know, at every turn then you're like, oh, this is something I can, I can really, you know, I can stand on and do, and it has real results. And then we, we become, we become great warriors and we become great, um, you know, a huge service to what this bigger picture is trying to create. And we can't, you know, the thing is if we, if we drain our own swamp and, you know, I, I, I live as close, I, I, I walk my walk, I talk my, t I, I walk my talk, whatever, <laughs> however you want to say it. Like, I live my truth every single day. Um, it's not enough because it's, it's not enough for me to live in some isolated world where things, you know, more or less work out well um, in my being and everything, and I feel connected to life. It's not enough because you know why? Because I'm connected to everything, and if everything around me is suffering, then where's the flow coming? I'm missing out. The world's missing out. It's it's not enough. So we do this for ourselves, we do it for each other, we do it for the wholeness of life. It's not, you know, it's not a compartmentalized kind of thing. Um, by the same token, you know, the more we, the more we expand and do this, the more those who maybe don't have the understanding or don't yet have the courage or don't yet have the, the motivation, they'll, they'll be um, lit up, they'll be inspired the more, um, the more people do this. And this is just one aspect of it, but it's the aspect I can offer. Um, and that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this because I'm, I'm just, just showing up to do what I believe is the right thing to do with this time, um, and, and make it as available and, and understandable as possible. So you guys can help me by, um, help, you know, help me do this by telling me where things are confusing, what, um, what you need clarification on, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, all right. And then same thing. So with the emotions, same thing. Is this dysfunctional? Is this functional? So, um, you know, as emotions come up and they're coming up all day long, so you have opportunities all day long to do this. Um, you ask yourself, you know, is, is this a useful feeling? Is this contributing to the betterment of my relationship with myself, my relationship with others? Um, does this emotion come from, did I inherit this emotion from being exposed to a lot of, of, of the same dysfunctional emotion and I just took it on because it became a familiar pattern in my life? Do I, am I attracted to people with certain dysfunctional emotions because I had them, you know, displayed before me my whole life and they feel familiar? You know, it's, it's, um, it's that, that great um, adage, it's, it's a Socratean adage, um, uh, the, um, the un, what is the word? Uh, the, the, the life isn't worth, the unexamined life is not worth living. Um, we have to be self-examining, but not, you know, in, in, within the context of all of this, is my self-examination functional? You know, you can actually go, go, go on and on and on. Um, it's functional if it's functional, if it's useful, 
then it is. If you're just endlessly self-examining and it's not serving any ultimate good, then no, it's not. Um, all right. So, um, you guys, I'm going to sign off now because I actually have to, speaking of making you stronger, I encourage everyone to, to you know, to, to train in some capacity every day. I'm going to go do my karate. I love my martial arts training. I'm going to go work with my sensei now. Um, but, um, we will continue this conversation and I'm so grateful that you've all been a part of this. All right. So much love. Have a beautiful day. Okay. Bye for now.